Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is Brown Foreman Corporation, ticker BFA. There's also an alternate ticker BFB and we are going to work through this company in the next five minutes discussing its valuation and its business quality. If you're going to like this video, please hit that like button at the bottom if you enjoy it as we walk through. This company is in the beverage industry, has a market cap of $30 billion. So let's look at the business description. This company manufactures, distills, bottles, imports, and exports alcoholic beverages, provides spirits, wines, whiskey, um, ready to pour product, vodka, tequila. So has the brands Jack Daniels, Woodford Reserve, Old Forester, uh, Irish Whiskey, Cooper's Craft, Herdena, New Mix, Pepe Lopez, Corbo Champagne, various brands like that. So it says operations US, UK, Germany, so basically around the world. They've been founded in 1870 and is headquartered in Kentucky. Now, two things leap out to me when I look at this. First, the beta is 0.746 and the share turnover is 2%. This is extremely low for a company in the S&P 500. A normal number would be like a number in the 100% range, which would mean that the entire share base turns over in one year. A 2% share turnover means it takes 50 years to turn over the shareholder base. That is extremely low. And the beta at 0.74 means that the company has a really low volatility, both in its share count and in its stock price that generally suggests a high quality company. So I'm really excited with what we're gonna see as we dive a little bit further in. Next thing is when you look at the return on invested capital, you see 20 straight years of profitability. Very, very good numbers. You like to see that. Again, suggesting a very high quality company. Also, the lowest year in the entire 20 years was a 14.7% return on invested capital back in 2004. Back in 2021, you're up to 18%, and it's very stable. You're not moving by more than half a percent, 1% from year to year. Very, very stable numbers for the most part, which means it's very predictable, very reliable, high returns on invested capital. They're in the double-digit range, and you also have years now nearing 20%. There is a big burst in 2016 of that 34%, but it's clearly an anomaly, and you get back to a more stable 20% range. Love these numbers, very, very high quality from what we can see there. You can also see that they're boosting that return on invested capital up to 42% for return on equity. There's probably some sort of leverage inherent in this business. Really good numbers here. I don't know whether it's debt per se, because your EV is pretty close to the market cap, but something is going on here that really is giving you that little bit of an extra boost to have that strong return. So, Everything here looks very good in terms of business quality. High gross profit margin, 67%. You can see that they're generally pretty stable, but they've declined a little bit over the last couple of years. Maybe they're expanding into some new beverages. But beverage industry as a whole is a very high quality business. And the alcoholic beverage industry also can be very high quality as you see here. Now, where we get into trouble here is your 10-year Kagers. You have revenue growth of 3%, asset growth of 5%. Well, it does show why you've declined a little bit in your returns is because you've been growing your assets faster than your revenue. But your EPS has kept up with that asset growth, so you're able to maintain a similarly high return on invested capital over time. So there was some operating leverage that's causing that to play out. Now, the problem is when you look at revenue growth of 3%, you compare that to PE of 37% or 37, something is wrong. This company is clearly way overvalued despite being extremely high quality, extremely predictable. The only way you can keep a PE of 37 when you have a revenue growth of 3% is if interest rates are extremely low. So I do expect that it's likely that you're going to see the valuation potentially drop over time as interest rates rise because the opportunity cost of keeping your money in what's really a stable growth company um, that's stable, slow growth is going to be very high. So I like what I see, extremely high quality, but if you have revenue growth of 3% and that's truly what you can rely on, then you need to not be paying more than like a PE of or basically you want like an earnings yield of like 7%. So you need to be paying something like a PE of 14 um, for a company like this, despite it being extremely high quality. If you want 10% returns though, you really need a combination of earnings yield plus growth to equal at least 10%. So they do have an amazingly high return on equity, but they're not able to grow at 40%. They're not able to grow at 20%. So there's a lot of excess cash that's gonna simply be distributed as dividends be, or be distributed as buybacks. And we can kind of see what they do with those. And you see these, you know, dividend growth numbers, not 7%, 9%, 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%, 9%, 10%, 11%, 12%, 13%, 14%, 15%, 16%, 17%, 18%, 19%, 20%, 21%, 
four percent. They are growing fat their dividends faster than three percent. They're growing their earnings per share faster than three percent. But you can't rely on that forever. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. We're working through every company in the S&P 500. And so if you want to see all those videos, you need to subscribe and ring the bell so you can get notifications as I upload new videos working through that whole S&P 500. Now, again, you see 10 straight years of profitability on the gross profit line, 10 straight years of operating profits, 10 straight years of net income. Great numbers. You're also seeing a declining share count over time. That's because they have a buyback program in place and that you really like to see that. Again, a very good indication of a quality company. However, you also see that their EPS is almost doubled in the decade, maybe doubled in a decade. So that's really like six, 7% growth. It's not that high. Um, so you have to be careful overpaying for a company like this. Because the only way that you can be bailed out for overpaying is if you have high growth. Now you see the asset growth has been very, very minimal. You basically doubled your PP&E from, from 400 million to 800 million. So that is, you know, six, 7% asset growth, similar to our earnings per share growth, but they've also grown goodwill a little bit, but they haven't grown intangibles. So Overall, pretty good numbers here. Long-term debt has gone up. They do have some leverage here, you know, half a billion dollars to $2.3 billion. So you can see a little bit of that leverage that's boosting the return on equity. Now in your cash flow statement, we can clearly see that they have very, very minimal stock-based compensation. So what did you say? This was a $30 billion company. So for a $30 billion company, only having $10 million in stock-based compensation, that's very, very minimal. Especially when you look at some years, they're buying back more shares than they issue in a decade. So very, very good sign. But it's not stable share buybacks. It appears that they're being opportunistic, which is actually kind of good. They're really focused on returning their money through dividends. So that's something to be aware of. Overall, very good company. Brown Foreman would definitely go on my watch list. This stability here in the high return on invested capital, always being above 15%, always being a profit, 20 straight years of profits, 20 straight years of double digit return on invested capital, very high quality. You have strong gross profit margins over 50%. You have strong return on equities over 20%, strong return on invested capital over 20%. The only downside is really your valuation. That's just a little bit high compared to your revenue growth. So I love this company. This looks great. Would definitely be something I'd be interested in the future. Everything in the beverage industry tends to be really good. The only downside is that it's not growing super fast. And so without you know stealing market share, you're going to be kind of capped by the growth in the industry. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. As I work through every company in S&P 500, you're going to want to see those videos. You need to be subscribed and hit that bell so that you can get more videos as I upload them each and every week. Thank you for listening. And until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.